in the upcoming elections? Well, looking at what I'm seeing, and I always will prefer to use the localities I know as the basis for coming to a conclusion. What I'm seeing, the kinds of things I hear people talk about, the kind of campaign I've seen around, it appears to me that then people will return to power. But if it's your locality, your locality is already pro-MPP. And so it's no surprise you come to that conclusion. No, but I'm saying, Ex as I travel around, I do travel around a lot. I do a lot. And I see the things that people never used to experience. They're experiencing them. And I they see. are praising government. So the polls that put your candidate uh, second to the NDC's candidate are wrong. <laughs> you see, when it comes to politics, mm -hmm. everybody wants to try to demonstrate that he or she is ahead. But the real this in this election, both parties have invested heavily in research. And I know mm. that the research results doesn't show that uh, my, uh, my candidate Baumia is second. No. Including the latest Afrobarometer report that indicates that Ghanaian people are not happy with the current administration. Has it ever been the case that Afrobarometer report has said that people are happy? At least since, ever since they started. Right? But people vote and they vote for government in power. Mm. I think that sometimes I wonder where they do their research. Sometimes I truly wonder. And now I'm not an academician, so. I, I, I ask them, the things I learned in political science in school, in all the social sciences, if I take any one of those theories and put it within my community, what would be the results? Would that have meaning? Mm. They'll have no meaning. I wonder why we're still doing, reading the same things that we've read ever since we got in. No, but I'm surprised you say that because some of these polls prior to 2016, 2020, they had indicated that the NPP was going to win and the NPP did win. And so if they are saying that the NPP has a problem and they won't win, you might as well believe I don't well know which them. polls you're talking about, mm -hmm. which ones you're specifically referring to. But I'm saying that research results show differently. I see. Yeah. And, and you have research res results that show We differently. have. They also have. I see. Very well. And they also have. They know. <laughs> Speaking of the elections, what assessment or readings have you made about the Electoral Commission's um, engagements and interactions with the political parties and the candidates in general? Well, so far, to the best of my knowledge, whatever the Electoral Commission has to do and wants to do, they put it out in the form of constitutional instruments. For election, you have to do A, B, C, D, E, mm -hmm. and it comes to parliament, it passes, becomes a law. The regulation should be the guide. Is there any regulation they have put out which you can say or you can fault? Mm. There's none that I've seen. Of course, the political parties always try. It's only just one. When we're in position, we did similar things. And they're in opposition now doing similar things. The things they praised, in 2016, now they are condemning. You know, the things we condemned in 2016, now we are praising. Mm. So it means that the person is doing the right thing, just that each one of us is trying to take advantage of some circumstance which may not, they have not prepared for. Can we trust the current electoral commission to deliver a free and fair election? Do we have any reason not to trust them? They conducted the last one. Mm -hmm. Do you have any reason to complain? You don't. For me, I've been working in elections since I was a polling station chairman. And I rose through. Mm. I know that the Electoral Commission can do very little about how my results are counted and declared. Mm. In the past, they were not declared at the polling station. So sometimes you do your audition, you go there, they audition, and they try to offer all kinds of... Yeah. Today... The Supreme Court says that count, declare it at the police station and paste it. But so if I'm following the rules, nobody can cheat me. If I'm learning and preparing myself, 
Nobody can. I see. So, 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 how should Ghanaians process some of the errors that the Electoral Commission has made and announced in the past? Which one? For instance, it had to go back and forth on the uh, 2020 general elections. We did know, it go back and forth? Indeed, it did. And then we also know no, that during, not true. during the. In announcing the figures, mm -hmm. she missed announced one. That was the only thing. And our opponents tried to make capital out of it. Outside that of that. Mistake. Outside of that. Outside of that as well. I, I, and again, I don't want us to do a back and forth on that. But outside of that, we know while they were doing their registrations, they made mistakes. Uh, the opposition NDC has also made a number of accusations against them. They have come out to talk about those admitted to some, for instance, the Pusiga, uh, uh, you know, constituency issue. And then, you know, you have an electoral commission that says that despite all their security, they lost some uh, biometric devices. Do you think the Electoral Commission themselves have given room for the dis distrust that surrounds the ability to deliver a free and fair election? You see, when it comes to political communication, the strategy is to make mounting out of molehills. Right. Whatever they conceded that, this is my staff. He is supposed to do A, B, C, D, E. In doing A, B, C, D, he jumped B and went to C. He drew my attention very well. I have the power under the law to correct that. Right? Um, uh, losing, haven't you lost anything before? This organization. Haven't you lost anything P before? Pusiga wasn't a loss. Pusiga, <laughs> was was, Pusiga was an officer taking people's numbers and transferring them without their notice, without their knowledge. Okay. So... Is, is, that, is that Officer Electoral Commission? What I'm suggesting is that when we talk about uh, TV3, uh -huh. you can misconduct yourself in a way that affects their image, but you're not TV3. You're an employee of TV3, mm -hmm. and once the attention is drawn to that, they'll correct it. It doesn't mean that TV3's integrity is, is the one that is an issue. It's a staff who misconducted him or herself there's something wrong which has affected their integrity. But once the attention is drawn to that, it's corrected. I oh, think we should differentiate between that. I mean, <laughs> one of our officers told me something about some of the staff of the, uh, what was it, uh, NIA. Mm -hmm. he, the officer, when he got there, he was so angry. But you are sitting in a cry. I've sent somebody to go and do something at Bolga. And he misconducts himself with that, that. Your data has been compromised. But what is critical is that as soon as he found out that information, he quickly takes steps mm -hmm. to correct it. Right? If he or she did not correct it, then it means that he is complicit. Mm -hmm. right. But when an officer, and I'm saying that if you come to from my experience in election management. Right. This thing won't happen in my constituency. 